Welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting July 6, 2015. Let's jump right in with this week's Daily Security Bites. Monday's story is a hacking team got hacked. If you haven't heard of the controversial Italian security company called The Hacking Team, it's actually a company that sells surveillance software, otherwise known as spyware, to governments. Over the weekend, a group of hackers actually breached their company and took over their Twitter to actually post about the breach. After breaching their company, they stole over 400 gigabytes of data which they shared on a torrent. This torrent leak shows a lot of embarrassing uh, information for the hacking team. It includes a lot of internal corporate emails and data. It includes some of the company's source code. And it also shows allegedly some of the countries that uh, actually worked with this particular surveillance software uh, company. And these include a lot of countries that are known for censoring their citizens, embargoed countries, which you know a lot of other countries won't do business deals with. In any case, it's a very interesting leak, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of details emerge afterwards. And frankly, I've never really liked these legitimate hacking companies that sell zero-day or hacking software to other people. I think governments should focus on defense, both of their own organizations and of their citizens. In any case, it was just a very interesting leak uh, to actually see a company that's known for hacking or creating spyware to be hacked themselves is rather ironic. And if there's any new details that are interesting, I'll be sure to share it with you throughout the week. Tuesday's story is some leaked malware and vulnerabilities. Over the weekend, researchers from the Malware Must Die blog posted details about a new leaked botnet creator. It's called Kins 2.0 or Zeus VM, and it's the tools you need to create a Trojan file as well as what they call the panel files or the backend HTML for the command and control portion of this particular botnet. Now what hasn't leaked is the source code for the actual Trojan itself. Nonetheless, this tool is really all a script kitty needs to create his own botnet. Now this particular tool set costs around $5,000 on the underground and one of the big takeaways here is now that this particular uh, bot framework has leaked, that means some less sophisticated actors who don't have the finances can now start to use these tools to make their own botnets. So the community expects an increase in Zeus VM uh, botnets in the future. Now the good news here is if you have watch guard devices or things like gateway antivirus or things like our APT blocker or other sandboxing technologies, they're pretty good at catching this class of botnet. Nonetheless, I'd really recommend checking out the Malware Must Die blog and of course the blog of the original French researcher that noticed this particular leak. Now, besides that, I also wanted to share a quick update to yesterday's hacking team story. Today, a number of pundits have been picking apart the files that have been leaked because of this breach, and they stumbled upon some zero-day uh, vulnerabilities. Specifically, CERT released an advisory warning about a zero-day use-after-free vulnerability in Adobe Flash that the hacking team apparently was sitting on to leverage for their clients. Now, there's no fix for this right now, but if you use Adobe Flash, you might want to be aware of this particular zero day exploit. And Wednesday's story is the cyber sky is falling, the cyber sky is falling. What I mean about that is today a whole lot of panic cropped up about uh, many information technology issues that coincidentally happened at the same time. You probably saw news of the New York Stock Exchange going down for about three to four hours due to some sort of computer error. At the same time we learned that United ha had to ground airlines again due to some sort of computer error. And finally during all of this, the Wall Street Journal's website went down at the same time. This of course caused the more tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists to consider whether or not this might be some sort of network or cyber attack. Now the results are in and it does not seem likely that any of these were any sort of hack or cyber attack. According to the New York Stock Exchange, this was just a computer problem, not a hacker attack, and the Homeland Security actually confirms the same. United says it was an issue with a router that caused their issue, and the Wall Street Journal just said they had some web downtime. So it doesn't look like this was a cyber attack. There is still one little interesting uh, tidbit 
of information that perhaps caused some people to consider the New York Stock Exchange might be an attack. And that is the fact that a well-known Twitter handle that's associated with the anonymous hacktivist group posted a predictive message last night at around 9 p.m. talking about uh, the Wall Street having a bad day. So that is kind of interesting, but again, there really is no proof of an attack here. So really, one of the takeaways in this story is never to panic if you're having any sort of IT incident. You know, it's probably good for security experts to have a little bit of paranoia just to keep them on their toes and for them to go research incidents when they happen. But a great security professional will pair that uh, paranoia with a bit of scientific skepticism and will actually find the forensic evidence before jumping off into the deep end. By the way, there is one other takeaway for all these stories, and it is that all these stories are information security related. If you've ever done any sort of rigorous information security study, you've probably run into CIA, or confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are things that you're trying to achieve as an information security professional. And you have to remember, availability is a very, very important part to your organization's information security. This means even if an incident has nothing to do with an attack or with hackers, just having systems down like the New York Stock Exchange experience can be detrimental to business. So the real high level takeaway here is you should make sure to brush up your disaster recovery and business continuity plan. You need to plan for these sorts of disasters, even if they're disasters that are caused by computer glitches and not nefarious hackers. In any case, it was a pretty interesting day. Remember, don't freak out out even if you have security incidents and make sure that you've brushed up your business continuity and disaster recovery plan. Thursday's story is an emergency Adobe Flash update. You probably remember at the beginning of the week when I talked about how the hacking team got hacked. The hacking team of course is this security organization that was really selling malware to governments uh, that got hacked and had 400 gigabytes of data stolen from their network. In an update the next day, I also talked about how some of this data included zero-day vulnerabilities, including a zero-day vulnerability in Flash. Well, the good news is today Adobe released an update that actually fixes this vulnerability as well as over 30 other vulnerabilities in Adobe Flash. Now, this is good news because right now the criminal underground has their hands on this zero-day flaw. And by the way, there is another zero-day flaw being used on the underground uh, that was fixed by this particular patch. So the takeaway way is simple. If you use Adobe Flash, you want to go get this update immediately to make sure you're not affected by the zero-day hacking team exploit. While I'm talking about updates, do you know there is also an update to the OpenSSL software out there, the latest versions of it anyways. There's a pretty complex vulnerability in how the OpenSSL client trusts certificate chaining, and basically the latest update fixes this. Now, if you're a WatchGuard customer that knows we use OpenSSL, you might be wondering if we're vulnerable. The good news there is we are not at all in any of of our products. The versions we use in all of our products are not vulnerable to this. Anyways, if you do use OpenSSL clients, you do want to check out that advisory as well to make sure you're not affected. Friday's story is more Lizard Squad drama. You probably remember me talking about Lizard Squad. These are the uh, attack group known for DDoSing and attacking game companies, doing things like taking down Xbox Live and PSN and things like that. In any case, this week, a 17-year-old Finnish hacker was sentenced for his crimes. Basically, he was prosecuted for over 50,000 cyber crimes, and they found him guilty. However, he was only given a two-year suspended sentence and no jail time. Right after this, John Smedley, who was the head of Sony Online Entertainment at the time of the PSN hacks, went on Twitter and said some pretty harsh things about this hand slap sentence, and basically said he'd keep going after this hacker and maybe even sue his parents. And there are some articles after this kind of critiquing the way Smedley handled this. However, today Daybreak Games, which is the company he now works for, is under DDoS attack. And you can probably presume it's coming from Lizard Squad members. And because of this, uh, John Smedley went on Reddit and shared a post just talking about what this particular Finnish hacker did against him personally. Things like stealing and releasing his uh, social security number. Uh, 
uh, filing his taxes, causing the airplane he was on to be downed. And he makes a pretty good case for how this particular Finnish hacker did some pretty atrocious hacks that caused businesses and a lot of people a lot of pain and money. While I don't necessarily think Smedley's harsh Twitter reaction was the right thing to do, I actually kind of agree that this particular hacker should have gotten a stronger sentence. Now there's no real takeaway for this story, I just found it to be an interesting infosec drama. However, it does make you think about one of the big challenges with information security around the world, and that's the fact that we don't really have great laws anywhere that properly prosecute these, these crimes. Some of our laws are too general and widespread with, with harsh consequences for things that may not be that bad. Meanwhile, in other locations, hackers that really have done some really bad attacks get off scot-free. Hey, that's it for this week. I hope you found it interesting. As always, please follow our blog. You can find it at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. It's where I post this weekly video and all the daily security bites. And be sure to check out the reference section if you want to see links to these stories and many others. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And also be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want these videos as soon as they come out. One quick show note. Next Next week I'll be traveling in the UK, so I may not be able to post my video every single day, or I may post it at very unusual hours compared to normal, but nonetheless I'll try to post some videos. Anyways, as always, here at WatchGuard we're rooting for you.